This video shows the proper method to attach power, pixels, and a data signal into the EasyPix controller. The first thing we need to do is use a screwdriver, in this particular case of Phillips, and remove the screw that is holding the cover on each end. Now, power and pixels are connected on the right. Just data, that is the signal from DMX RS-485, will come in on the left. Okay, the first thing we need to do is hook up a power supply. Now the power supply is connected to the V-24VDC, positive and negative. You can see it listed as power in. Now, this voltage coming into the controller does need to match the power of the pixels that you're connecting. Now in our particular case, we're going to use an item number 65, Holiday Coro Power Supply. You of course also need to make sure that your power supply that you're selecting has sufficient power to power all the pixels. Consult your manufacturer of the pixels to add up the total wattage required and ensure that your power supply is at least that amount of wattage. Now, in this particular case, our power supplies use the standard common method in the United States, which is positive is red, negative is black. And we're going to simply loosen up these screws, which I've already done, with a standard small flat blade screwdriver. I'm going to slide them in, holding that in place and then just screwing it down. Now, it doesn't need to be overly tight. Don't strip out the screw heads. Now, I'm also doing this while the unit is not powered up. You should not assemble electronics while they are powered up. Now, the next section we have to configure is the pixels. Now, in this particular case, we're gonna use brilliant bulbs. Brilliant bulbs feature a wire that is black. So, we have to identify the pixels based upon, in this particular case, not wire color, but on physical location. In this particular case, we know that because of the orientation of the wire and with the fact that this particular pixel has a ribbed positive. So, consult with your manufacturer or cut sheet or product description to ensure that you're using the right wires. Now, also, pixels have an input and an output. It is critical that you only push the data in the direction that pixels are designed for. So, most pixels will have some sort of data in or an arrow. That arrow, if there is one present, needs to point away from the controller. That indicates the direction of the data travel. In this particular case, again, I have referred to the sheet that comes with this pixel. <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and connect this pixel. This has the ribbed wire as the positive, which is in this particular case, the far top screw point. Put it in here and tighten it down. Again, I have already loosened these screws here. You will need to pre-loosen the screws before you install the wire when it comes from the factory. And finally, I'm going to skip the clock line. Now, pixels will typically just use positive data and ground, and some will use the clock, like 2801, but not all. 6803 is another type of pixel that will also use the clock. So if your pixel has four wires, you more than likely will have to hook up the clock wire. Check with your vendor. So I've hooked up the ground. Just give a tug to make sure everything is connected correctly. Everything looks fine. We're going to go ahead and try power to see if it's working. Okay, the controller starts up. Now this controller is now in decoder mode. Decoder mode means that it is taking a signal from the DMX input. It is not trying to decide what to do with the pixels itself. It's waiting for an input. And if we just want to test the controller, we're going to press and hold the M button to put it into master mode. I can then go through and select M again, number of pixels, 170, that's the maximum. The type, 2801. Now in this particular case, this pixel is a 2811. So we're going to select 2811. You can see the pixels now come on. I'm now going to press uh, the M button again. This tells us the order, if they're RGB, BRG, or some other order. Not all pixels are RGB order. That means that the first channel is red, second channel is green, and the third channel is blue. So if your pixels differ, select that there. Again, check with your manufacturer. This allows your controller to run all of the pixels as one set of three DMX channels and not individually controlled. And you can make them address backwards so that the pixel at the very end is the first address. And this is the mode. Mode is test mode. So we're going to hit the plus sign and you can see that we're going through different modes. 
For a complete list of these specific modes, look at our website and that will tell you what this number means. And you can see we can go through a variety of different methods. 8 being the hardest on pixels because that will draw all power at white pixels. Now, let's proceed with connecting the data line. Now, this controller is an E111 or standard DMX 1990 controller. It will take a standard DMX signal, for example, from our ActaDongle, Intech Pro, any other type of DMX source. Now, we're going to use, in this particular case, a Cat5 cable that would be typically used with our ActaDongle. Now, if you have an XLR cable, you may need to use that instead. Now, in our case, we're going to be using the orange pair of wires, which is the E111 data standard. So we're just going to cut off these others. We're going to use this orange pair. This is orange, solid, and orange, white. I'm simply going to unravel them. Now, ideally, you should tin these using a little bit of solder. Now, the cable that is considered positive for DMX, DMX has a negative and a positive, almost like a power cable. The positive is the white and orange, which is pin 1, and pin 2 is the orange, the solid orange. On the controller, there is a DMX in and out. Technically, it makes no difference which one you hook it into. Now, in this particular case, we're just going to hook it up as it's supposed to be hooked up, which is DMX at the top. I'm going to unscrew this cable, or I'm sorry, unscrew this terminal block. The DMX plus is at the top, DMX minus is the second terminal. So I'm simply going to install the wires in here and screw them down. Again, note that I'm doing this while the unit is powered off. Now, your DMX cable is now connected. If you wish to connect an additional cable, you would connect it to the DMX plus and minus of the arrow going out. It is not required that the GND or ground cable is connected. Often, many DMX setups will work fine. If you have an XLR cable or you're using a grounded uh, connection, you can also connect those GNDs here. This is how you set up your EasyPix controller.